Welcome. Welcome to Christmas at Trinity. I'm Pastor Kevin Bergerson, and we're so glad that you could join us for this Christmas Eve worship service together. It's not feeling anything like it usually does, and yet, in the midst of the world, God still comes to us in Jesus Christ. And so we're so glad that you could gather with family and friends around a screen this year to be able to share in this service with candlelight and communion and of course hearing again that promise that God comes into the world for us for you and for me we're so glad that you came with us tonight and we pray that this service would bless you welcome to Christmas at Trinity we make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen join us in our call to worship This year, we dreamed of world peace. We dreamed of deep breaths and restful sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We dreamed of doors open wide and a cure to disease. We dreamed because to dream is to believe. For to dream is to hope, to dream is to see. So. Make room in your being to dream yet again of a world without fear and a God that draws near. For it is almost Christmas. Love is almost here. May we dream to see and hope to believe. Let us worship holy God.
In the beginning, God dreamed of a beautiful world in Egypt. The Israelites dreamed of freedom. In the wilderness, the people dreamed of safety. In Jerusalem, the people dreamed of a Messiah. In Bethlehem, the shepherds and wise men dreamed of a new beginning. Then, several years later, Jesus walked this earth and dreams came true. The sick were healed, the poor had food, the forgotten and ignored were seen, the children were welcomed, everyone was invited to the table, and the world has never been the same. So tonight, we are those who dream. Tonight, we dream the same dreams of our ancestors before us. Tonight, we dream of justice and mercy, of love and kindness, of peace and hope. Tonight, we dream of a God that draws near to us out of unfailing love. With the birth of Christ, salvation has drawn near. The word which was with God at the beginning has come down to live among us. The light of new life bursts forth. May this candle be a reminder that there will be a day when every dream will be fulfilled. And until then, we will be those who dream. Let us worship holy God. Hey friends, it's time for a little good news time. I invite you to come a little bit closer so you can hear us and make sure that you're a part of this good news time today. I am so excited, Veda. It's almost Christmas time. Aren't you excited? I'm so excited. I, I feel like it is Jesus' birthday. You're right. But I feel like I'm that giant adult elf in that movie who's like screaming at the top of his lungs, it's Christmas. Christmas is here. Is it time to eat the cookies? No. No. Um, is it uh, time to open the presents? No. No? Is it um, time to sing all the carols? No. Is it time to eat all the food? No. Why not? Why not? I mean, I mean, I mean we're all here, right? Is everybody here? Wait, not everybody's here though, right? Who, who, are we, who are we missing? I mean, you're here, I'm here. We can open up all the presents. We can eat all the cookies. Who's missing? Mommy, Elsie, and Sybil. Mommy, Elsie, and Sybil are missing? Oh yeah, they are, aren't they? Because they're not even anywhere. They're not, they're not here, are they? I only see the pictures. You know, this is, yeah, we just see pictures of all, the, all of our Trinity family out here too, right? But to realize that this year is going to be a little different. Maybe not, we can't have all of our family over like we normally would, right? But the good news is, is that Jesus is still going to be born, right? Mm -hmm. We still get to celebrate Christmas, even if not everybody's here, right? Well, I know that there will be a time when all the family can be back together again. This Christmas may not be it, but we know that Jesus being born, right? Mm -hmm. That he's there to bring us all this love, right? regardless of what's going on in the world. 
even if it's a lot of big people talk about scary things or sad things or happy things or whatever else is going on in the world, we know that God is with us. That's good news, isn't it? Yes. So we wanted to wish you a very Merry Christmas from Trinity, everybody. Can you say Merry Christmas, Sue? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Listen closely, we can almost hear the angels sing. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the bleats of sheep following shepherds and the hooves of confused barn animals. And if we listen closely, we can almost hear the innkeeper say, No room. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the star whisper, Follow me. If we listen closely, God, we can almost hear you. So as we turn to your word, holy writer, don't let us miss a thing. The smell of the hay, the cool of the air, the way Mary cherished this wild dream in her heart. We want to hear it all. We don't want to miss a thing. So today we pray. Can you help us listen closely? Amen. The first lesson for this Christmas Eve. This lesson often comes to us on Christmas Eve. It is Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 2. This poem promises deliverance from Assyrian oppression, a hope based on the birth of a royal child with a name full of promise. While Judah's king will practice justice and righteousness, the real basis for faith lies in God's passion for God's people. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Isaiah writes, the people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who have lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now as we prepare for the Christmas gospel to listen to this special music.
Merry Christmas, sisters and brothers in Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Phoebe Bridgers, she's a songwriter that you would probably think a little bit like Joni Mitchell. She penned these lyrics for her song called Christmas Song. Coming back from the country for the good food and lousy beer, this winter so dry and the dirt road so dusty, at the lightest fall of rain, the bacteria bloom. You don't have to be alone to be lonesome. It's easy to forget. The sadness comes crashing like a brick through the window, and it's Christmas, so no one can fix it. So no one can fix it. Phoebe Bridgers. She brings a song that we don't want this Christmas, but it's the song we might need this year. I've heard you tell me stories about how after 20 straight years, this will not be a Christmas together. And you tell me the dream, the dream to be together, to have a hug, to not watch the paint flaking on the wall. Even if you have been quarantining with family, this year has been um, challenging. And for many, there has been running and adapting and changing and opening and closing since March. Since March. Since March. Yes, our bodies are tired. Yes, our minds are tired. But I also want to name for you this Christmas Eve that our souls can be tired too. Beloved, it's okay that our souls are tired. It's soul tiring to prop up work, to prop up the church as an institution, to prop up our kids and grandkids, to prop up our mental health, and give, each other, uh, give ourselves the Stuart Smalley pep talk every day. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and dang it, people like me. Beloved, it's okay to claim the need for rest for your souls. Even in the midst of this, the stock market has soared. The wealthy have gotten wealthier. Some of us didn't really need that stimulus check, and some of us, it kept food on the table. For some, 2020 hasn't even seemed to touch them. And for others, they are literally burying broken pieces of their hearts with the limit of 10 people. Beloved, it's okay to claim rest for your souls. And I want to offer two different ways to do so this Christmas. And so I'm going to invite my daughter Veda to come up now so that you can hear again the Christmas gospel. Veda, would you come up here, please? And as she does, I want you to prepare your hearts and minds to hear again the news of Jesus come to us this Christmas from Luke chapter 2. Outside of Bethlehem, shepherds were watching their sheep on the hills. Suddenly, an angel appeared. The shepherds looked up at the bright night sky. Don't be afraid, the angel said. I bring you wonderful news. The child God promised was born tonight. The shepherds listened as amazement. The twinkling stars seemed like each of the angel's words. The angel continued. Go to Bethlehem. You will find the child laying in a bed of hay. Suddenly, many angels flew 
the heavens, they sang together glory to God in the highest and peace to all people on earth. Let's hurry, one shepherd said. The angel said, the child was born tonight. But I will, but I, but what about the sheep? Another shepherd asked. Let the angels watch them. The youngest shepherd said, yes, let the angels watch them. The shepherds happily hurried to Bethlehem. The angel was right. The shepherds found the baby Jesus asleep on a bed of hay. They told Mary and Joseph all the angel had said. The angel said the baby is the Messiah, the promised one. He is the one we have waited for, the, they explained, but he, this is a stable, would God be born here? Um, among the animals, moo, said the cow, ba, said the sheep, coo, said the dove. Mary smiled. She knew that Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. Later, the shepherds returned to their sheep, praising God for all they had seen and heard Jesus was born. So what did you hear? This familiar story, but in a very different voice. Having a child's voice read the gospel changes how we hear the story. How does it not shock us each and every year that as Christians we claim Emmanuel, God is with us, that God has come in human form and born as a baby to set us free. How shocking, how surprising. A baby, a child has come back to push back against sin, death, and the power of the devil? Well, listen to Jesus again. Then the little children were being brought to him in order that he might lay his hands on them and pray. And the disciples spoke sternly. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And he laid his hands and blessed them and went on his way. So friends, tonight, if your soul is weary, then cling to the childlike faith in the midst of our world today. Because Jesus promises to welcome us no matter where our faith is. Strong, weak, adult, child, it doesn't matter. Because God has taken the initiative in Jesus Christ, sending Jesus into our world to remind us that there is no social distance between us and the love of God. It is ferocious. It is unstoppable. And it is for you tonight. Beloved, it is okay if your soul is tired tonight. Listen to this promise from John. But to all who received Jesus Christ, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God. Friends, that is who we are the children of God, and that we are invited to again hear tonight this promise that this baby is for you and for me in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of our fear and worry, in the midst of our heads being tired, our hearts being tired, and even our souls. And so instead of talking more about Jesus to you tonight, I want you to actually just receive his peace his comfort, his word for you. 
And so, at home, just invite you to take your hands, open them up, put your feet on the floor, and rest your palms with open hands in your lap. And the simple prayer I offer for you tonight, it's not fancy. It's just simply, Jesus, you are welcome here. Jesus, you are welcome here. And so I invite you to just bow your heads with me now as we hear this prayer and receive all of what God has for us because that is all we can do is to receive God's unconditional promise as God comes into the world again to us this Christmas Eve. Would you pray with me? Jesus, you are welcome here. Jesus, you are welcome here. Jesus, you are welcome here. And all God's people say, Amen. And Merry Christmas to you. Join me in singing this next hymn. to dream with our eyes wide open. We believe in peace. We believe that peace is not found by accident. Prepare the way. We believe in joy. We believe that joy is an angel chorus and gifts from the Magi as well as soul food, big tables, open doors, candlelight, fireside warmth, singing in the shower, and the body of Christ gathered as one. We believe in love. 
We believe that God loves us so much that God could not stay away. So God showed up as a child. We believe that that love is real, and we know that it changes us. Therefore, we believe in the power of dreams. And we believe that nightmares, which are all too true here and now, will have no place in God's promised day. Until then, we believe in passing the light, in showing up, in doing the work, in listening for angel choruses, and in learning from the youngest among us. We believe. Help our unbelief. Amen. This Christmas, we gather around our tables differently than in past years, and we gather around God's table differently than in past years. At this point, if you'd like to press pause, we'll then gather your elements together for celebrating communion. You can do so now. As we gather around God's table tonight, this Christmas Eve, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. At this point, we invite you to press pause again and share in Holy Communion. You simply are extending the words, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And even if you're by yourself tonight, this Christmas Eve, you're not alone. We are with you. And hear these words of promise. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now that we have gathered around God's table, it is time for us to sing and bring more light into the world with Silent Night. I invite you to join me by going ahead and gathering a candle and pressing pause if you need to right now and gathering around with me as we begin to get ready for this moment. Veda. We're so glad to be able to share this light with you all the way from Trinity Lutheran of Hawthorne. And as you light your candles and dim the lights in your room, maybe, just like we are going to do so in here, know that we are not alone because we share in Christmas Eve together. So I invite you now to take a moment to prepare your hearts and minds as we sing Silent Night together and welcome Christmas, and say with our head and with our hearts and our minds, Jesus, you are welcome here. Jesus, you are welcome here. Let's sing together.
Would you please pray with me, church? We come to you tonight with dreams tucked into our pockets, admitting that at times it feels like a risky to dream. At times it feels risky to ask for too much to believe in that which we cannot see. So instead, we make wishes on stars and search for luck in clover fields. Instead of sinking into you, we try to control the narrative. However, somewhere, rumbling deep in our heart, there is a dream for a better world, trapped like a caged bird. Open our eyes to you in our midst. Give us the confidence of Mary to sing into the mystery. Dust your dreams off for the shelves of our hearts until once more we are those who dream. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace, Christmas peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Join us in our closing hymn. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being a part of Christmas at Trinity. And we're so excited to be able to invite you to be part of what God is doing in and through us in the new year too. So stay safe and Merry Christmas. Now here's David's amazing post. Listen to this.